Bamboo Fire follow-up, Fault Found, or Fluke, another A1 agitation power problems persist, and Nylon's nasty noodling leaves non-stop nozzle boogers. All this and more, Print Fix Friday, episode 204. Let's get into it. Starting off strong with an update from the Bamboo Lab A1 fire from last week. The user from Reddit actually emailed us some photos so you guys can see them as well. For those that are wondering what we're talking about, here's a quick synopsis. Their story is that they started a print like normal, the machine shut off, the display was black, everything stopped moving. By the time that they were able to make a ticket with Bamboo, their significant other walked out to find the machine on fire where they quickly disconnected it and were able to just blow out the fire. And here's what the user provided, including all identifying information on the board as well. We can see, unlike what a lot of you in those comments said, oh, there's just smoke. It's just getting hot. It's not getting hot. That's a fire. Th that's an actual fire. Boards don't do that unless they catch fire. This is a short that occurred somewhere on the board. And if we take a closer look, we can see there was likely a component here and potentially one right there. And it looks like maybe this diode of sorts caused this short, but there are quite a few very thin traces here that if given a little bit too much juice could cause some problems. Looking at the next photo, we can see that there is some sort of a protective, maybe vibration isolating pad. But if that pad does wear through, this is indicative of what you would see if something like that would occur, where you're dealing with a friction, removing some of that protective coating from the PCB, causing a short. Is that what happened? Now, we're not exactly certain. We can see elsewhere that that appears to be either a diode or a capacitor or some sort of two leg device. If you do have one of these boards in good shape, that is the same model number, I'd love to see a photo of it because I really do want to figure out exactly what caused it. But we are trying to get these boards from the user so we can send them off and have them professionally analyzed to determine exactly where the fault occurred. This can not only provide us with more information, but we can provide that information to Bamboo and hopefully allow them to make upgrades and updates to their boards to prevent things like this from happening in the future. As we said in the intro, this could be an absolute fluke, but it's good for us to take a look at it when and where we can. But because the part is so badly damaged, we're not really able to determine what it is. We can see, though, a positive symbol that tells us this might be dealing with some sort of direct power input from the A1 on the tool head itself. Again, thankfully, no one was really injured in this. There's just damage to the machine itself. But we got extra photos. I wanted to show it to you all just so you could get a better idea of what happened here. Because there were a lot of people saying that, no, this is not a fire. And we are very positive, especially now. That it was a fire. Speaking of fire, you can call me the Ohio Players. My name is Grant. This is 3D Musketeers and Printfix Friday, where we help you get your printers back to printing with purpose. If you are going through printer issues, reach out to us on all the social medias. And our preferred method is to actually make a YouTube video and tag us in the description so we actually get a notification so we can go and take a look at it and show what's going on and try to help everybody in the process. And if you do like this series, coming up on four years total now, 208, it's going to be four years of never missing a Friday, make sure to leave a like and get subscribed. We greatly appreciate it. And I was hoping that we weren't going to be dealing with any more bamboo fires, but here we are again. This one you might remember from a previous Print Fix Friday where a Bamboo Lab A1 melted its metal oxide varistor from its power supply creating well a bit of a toasty situation unfortunately it's happened again we can see almost the exact same location the exact style of part it is the metal oxide varistor from the power supply now previously we had some inkling that it could have been related to bad power because the user was in a country that is currently going through some turmoil but this one based on the photos is either north american and the comments say it's 240 volt so european and while certainly this is the second machine that we've seen from a 240 volt country that's going through this issue i'm not certain that this one is going to be due to dirty power according to the user this machine is only two and a half weeks old and should not be dealing with any issues like this. 
They state that it had been printing very well, but this time they put on a print and it was going good up until the machine just stopped. No big deal. They thought they lost power, but they hadn't. Upon realizing they still have power, they flipped the printer over and this is what they found. And unfortunately, Bamboo Lab support has not really been all that helpful. And that's unfortunate. And it's something that we've seen historically with Bamboo support. You either get an amazing experience or an absolutely terrible one. There is nothing in between. And when it comes to safety issues, I really do wish Bamboo would get on top of them faster than traditional support tickets because my printer is melting and could catch fire is something that should be an elevated priority ticket. And as someone that doesn't own an A1, we do see some exposed wiring over here. I know that it's still in its sheathing, but traditionally for the EU, that is supposed to be covered. You're not supposed to have access to wiring like that, but whatever, Bamboo knows more about this stuff than I do, I hope. But this should not happen on not only a two and a half week old machine, but a two and a half year old machine. 3D printers should not have these issues. As we talked about last week and heavily on the most recent podcast, which we'll card to so you can take a listen. Value engineering is a thing. And unfortunately, when you're trying to hit price points of which the A1 is aggressively priced, some things do end up giving way. Power supplies are one of the easy things to save money on. And unfortunately, if you save too much money, you end up with something that could cause a bit of a barbecue. And unless your name is Wexter, that's not traditionally something that any of us would want, at least inside of our sheds. Hi, Wexter. And so realistically here, what should the user do? Immediately unplug the machine. Do not ever plug it back in. This machine is toast. Yes, if you are a certified electrician and know what you're doing, you can go and replace the power supply. But chances are because you posted on Reddit and didn't just fix the problem yourself, that's not where you land. Now we have seen other issues from A1s in the Bamboo Lab subreddit. Unfortunately, they've been deleted. This one is still up, so we're able to talk about it. But this is not the only case of this that we've seen, and it's not the only case that I've seen literally this week. The problem that we're running into is that, yes, there are so many more bamboo printers on the market, so the chances of one of them having issues is higher. But we need to look at determining, are these one-off flukes, or is this more indicative of a systemic problem? Similar to the Chidi Plus 4, where if you ran the plus four on 240 volt, that original SSR board was totally fine. But as soon as you put it on 110 volt, it was basically a ticking time bomb. Chidi still claims that it was totally fine, but they did release a new version of it, which is considerably safer. And you can see us test it here. And instead of getting to 200 plus degrees Celsius, it got significantly less warm than that. So it passed our test. I'm wondering if this could be a case of machines that have multi-voltage power supplies, which is a very common thing, but that maybe aren't designed to run on 240 applications. Because remember, most bamboo printers, at least on the X1 Carbon, so I'm assuming it's gonna be similar on the A1, they draw significantly more wattage on a 240 volt outlet because they're amperage limited, not voltage limited. And if these power supplies aren't rated for those numbers, they're going to get hot and parts are going to fail. Now, this also could be voltage drop in the line that we're dealing with. There's a lot of variables that play into it when you're dealing with mains voltage. But certainly, if you do have an A1 and you are in a 240 volt country, take a look on the underside when you get a chance. Don't tip it up on the bed cable. Just, you know, leave it on the side and just take a look at that bottom plate. This is not enough evidence for us to conclude that there is a fire hazard with A1s, but we are starting to see an unfortunate pattern with 240 volt A1s and that there's more than one of them that have had identical issues like this. We're gonna keep our eyes on it, but we'd love to know from you all down below. Do you believe that this is a case of value engineering? Do you think it's an honest mistake? Or do you think it's something to do with the user side of things, maybe dirty power or something like that? Love to know from you all down in those comments. Moving on from support flops to support successes, we've got Illuminated Technologies here who wants to give a big shout out to Prusa for their amazing support. 
after they caused an issue to their printer. We can see here that your boy may have tightened the grub screw a little too much, which caused it to pinch the filament path, creating a failure to pull back filament, which are likely the cause of the Z Home errors. On top of that, they could not insert the hot end from the bottom up, but could from the top down. That is what happens on an XL when you over tighten the grub screws. People with Nextruders and Prusa printers, please do not over tighten your grub screws they go just a hair above finger tight that's it they don't need a bunch they lock in and i'm not saying that it's happened to me before because as we all know i never have printer failures no it's, it's happened to me once and i feel like anyone that owns an extruder this will happen to you at some point if you're not careful but we had a further issue with this where they accidentally stripped out the first few threads of their heat block Prusa support was super awesome and actually replaced it all under warranty allowing them to get their machine back up and running and hopefully getting parts relatively soon and to me this is like one of those cases of a company going above and beyond when they really didn't need to this was very clearly a user fault good on Prusa support for stepping up and being able to help out there it's not technically their responsibility to do so but it's awesome to see a company going that extra mile to taking care of their customers now with that being said there has been some slippage recently we have noticed in our discord that there are people that haven't gotten the best support that we would be expecting from the price of a prusa but this to me is very much a case of you get what you pay for at least in this particular instance have you ever needed to contact prusa support if so what was your experience like love to know in those comments and that way i get to send this video to prusa support and if there's any good constructive criticism you might be able to give let's make sure they can see it we always want companies to do better we always want support to be better and when you pay the Prusa tax, you gotta have good support to back it up. You'd be pretty upset if you had no response from support after weeks and weeks and weeks with a burned printer, especially if you paid a Prusa price. And hey, if you do want to come hang out in our Discord, it's at the $10 tier and higher. Link's down below. Next up, Nylon Bunkers! Oh, uh, you know how I say it's not wet filament? It's wet filament with any nylon any nylon and i don't care if you live in arizona or florida assume it is wet at all times it is schrodinger's nylon assume it is dry and wet at the same time just dry it your dryer by and large is not going to hurt the nylon in fact the spool that the nylon is on is likely more susceptible to damage than the nylon itself but this is absolutely indicative of nylon being a little too damp. We can see that it is stringing, it is blobbing. Up here, it is really, really rough. And then obviously in this area, it starts to get even worse. This looks like potentially heat creep on it or just not enough cooling in general, but nylon is a difficult thing to print. And this is an X Max 3. We have the X Plus 3, not a bad machine. They're using 300C on the nozzle, 70 on the bed, and a chamber of 50C. Now, here's the thing. Different nylons require different things. I'm not aware of the F3 PA6, but looking at their website, or at least I think this is it on 3D Chimera, we can see they recommend bed temperature up to 80C and printing temperature from 260 to 285. Going a little hot for nylon is somewhat typical, but it can cause that extra stringing that you see. This little bit there, not that big of a deal. Pretty easy thing to deal with. Just cut it away. But... The further damaging on the model itself tells me that, well, you might want to get a 0.6 nozzle. When dealing with hardened materials, most 0.4 nozzles, even hardened, diamond, whatever, they are susceptible to clogging. And when you're dealing with CF materials, they have a tendency to clog quite a bit. This part as well is not going to be strong at all. We can see looking at this photo that it looks like some sort of shelf bracket with a cup of sorts in place this vertical segment is going to be unreasonably weak unless you're using something like the brand new continuous fiber machine that was teased over on kickstarter uh if you guys want to take a look at it we'll link to it below we are trying to get one i love continuous fiber we've used continuous fiber we used to actually even have mark forges here in the shop and a buddy of mine happens to be the ceo of the company so I'm very excited to see how their system goes, but seeing more continuous fiber machines getting out there in the market, I love it a lot. So, uh, hi, FiberSeek team. 
I would like to look at your machine, please, and thank you. The best case scenario, in my opinion, would be to cut this up into pieces, print this bracket on its side, and use like a dovetail joint to put it together with this part as well. That would give you the most amount of strength and not deal with very, very low layer times. Because the machine is slowing down to deal with the minimum layer times, it's going to ooze and have problems. And Nylon just loves to create problems. And while potentially some temperature, some retraction could work on this, the first thing to do with Nylon is make sure that is dry. Dry it while you are printing, and that is active drying. Something like a Sunlu S2, the S4, an Ibos dryer. I don't care what brand it is. It needs to get to at least 60 Celsius. The hotter, the better. If you can get to 80 or 90 Celsius, great. Run it at those temperatures. But please make sure it is a dedicated dryer for a 3D printer. You don't want to use like an oven or anything like that. So I'd love to know what you guys think down in those comments below about this one. I think it's wet filament. It's nylon. It's almost guaranteed that it is just damp in general. We will dry nylon here in Florida, even though we keep everything sealed in bags. In fact, I recently found out that one of my bags has a hole in it. Yay. That's going to take like three days to dry. But we dry nylon for at least 48 hours before we use it, even though they are sealed inside of the resealable sous vide bags with desiccant and everything is actively dry before it is put in storage. It's not worth losing expensive filament over a day or two worth of drying, and we always print out of those dryers. We do not leave nylon out in the open. That is a great way to just ruin the filament in general. So if you have any other tips for printing carbon fiber nylon, love to know. But do you want to give a huge thank you to all those names listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Thank you for what you all do in making these videos possible. If you do want to support the efforts that we do here on the channel to try to keep companies honest, help other people out, and you know, generally have fun Florida man style, you can do so by joining for as little as $1 a month. That gets you access to hours of behind the scenes content, including over three hours of recently posted 360 footage from our time in Sweden at Bontech. I think you all will heavily enjoy those videos if you've ever wanted to know what the Swedish countryside looks like or what behind the scenes conversations look like as well. And hey, at the $10 you know, you need to come hang out with myself and the entire 3D Musketeers team. We got a nice little crew there. It's a lot of fun inside of our Discord. Otherwise, leave a like, subscribe. That is all we have for you all today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. Dry your filament! And please, check your bamboos. I really don't want to keep making more bamboo fire videos. Giving your X1... God damn it. Oh, I'm going to get roasted for that. Oh, it's an XL, not an X1 grant. <laughs>